So taxable supply is transaction value which is the price actually paid or payable for the supply of goods or services. If the value of supply is not determined as per the above points, then the value of supply of goods or services of like kind and quality. If the value of supply is not determinable as per the above points, then the value of supply of goods or services will be calculated as per rule 30 and 31. Hello everyone, I am Arun Kumar, lecturer in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. Welcome to this new session, session number 1 on unit number 5 that is Valuation of Goods and Services under GST. So in this particular session, dear students, we are going to learn about how to compute or how to you know value the valuation of goods and services under GST, how to compute the value of a supply made by a particular supplier to the recipient what and all we are supposed to include, what and all we are supposed to exclude, how to deduct discount and how to compute the transaction value, how to compute GST payable on the transaction value and what is the total amount a particular recipient will be paying on a particular purchase of product or services about these concepts we will be discussing in today's session that too with respect to the theoretical aspects of valuation of supply of goods and services. So now let us understand what is this value of taxable supply as per section 15 of the GST Act? So what is this value of supply? So as per this section, value of taxable supply is transaction value, which is the price actually paid or payable for the supply of goods or services. And the price is the sole consideration. Also, where the supplier and the recipient are not related are unrelated parties. So according to section 15 of this GST Act, value of supply or value of taxable supply is nothing but the transaction value is called the value of taxable supply. So here you can see in this particular definition itself, so taxable supply is transaction value which is the price actually paid or payable for the supply of goods or services. So here for example, you are going to purchase a particular, you know, uh, let us say a uh, fridge, okay. You are purchasing a fridge or refrigerator. So you paid 5,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees, let us say, to purchase fridge, you paid 50,000 rupees. Along with that, along with that, you paid transportation cost of rupees 2,000 and installation charges, installation charges of 5000 and also you paid some warranty charges warranty charges of rupees 2000 so totally how much 50000 plus you know uh, 9000 so totally 59000 so here the selling price of the fridge is 50000 along with that you are also paying some expenditure with respect to this product that is the transportation cost installation charges and warranty charges of rupees 9000 totally of rupees 59,000. This 59,000 is called what? Transaction value. So transaction value is the taxable value of supply. So transaction value is nothing but the amount paid or payable by the particular buyer or the recipient of the goods or services. This is the meaning of transaction value. So transaction value is nothing but the amount paid or payable by the particular recipient and the transaction value includes the additional expenditure which are incurred along with the purchase of a particular product or the services. And here to consider this as a value of supply or taxable value of supply here the price is going to be the sole consideration and also the buyer and the seller will not be a related parties. If they are related parties, then the you know computation of value of supply will be different. If both the buyer and the seller are the different parties and if they are doing the transaction, then the transaction value will be called as the taxable value of supply. On that taxable value, on this particular value that is on 59,000, we will be charging the tax. Okay, on this value we will be charging the tax. Next, moving further. Inclusion in the value of supply that means what and all we are going to include to the value of supply. So refrigerator that is fridge, okay, fridge, 
rupees 50,000, the same, uh, you know, example, rupees 50,000. Along with that, on the selling price of the fridge, what and all we can include? So we can include the cess fees or charges other than the GST you paid, other than GST you paid. Next, amount incurred by the recipient on behalf of the supplier. That means any expenditure incurred by the supplier or by the recipient on behalf of the supplier. So supplier is supposed to make the payment, but on behalf of supplier, you make the payment. For example, for transportation charges on behalf of supplier, you pay the transportation charges of 2000 rupees that also you're supposed to include. And if you paid any other taxes other than GST, that also you're supposed to include and incidental expenses and amount charged for activities done before delivery. So before delivery, if packing charges you are paying, if let us say packing charges, if you pay 500, that also is supposed to include. And if you are, you know, uh, paying inspection charges of the particular product, that also is supposed to, you know, add. If you are paying design and development charges, that also is supposed to add. So what and all the expenditures will come, that all you are supposed to add for the selling price of the product. And delayed payment charges. If you are collecting any delayed payment charges, that also you are supposed to add and subsidies. So with respect to subsidies, subsidy given by state and central government, you will not be adding it. Okay. Subsidy given by state, subsidy given by state or central government, central government, you will not take this subsidy. If subsidy given by the private organizations or by NGOs, then you will be adding it here to the selling price of the product. Okay, subsidy, you will add the subsidy to the selling price of the product only if it is given by the private institutions or by the NGOs, not by state government or by the central government. So these are all the items you are going to add to the selling price of the supply that is for the value of supply. Next, value of taxable supply where the consideration is not only in money. So here, if the buyer and the seller are unrelated parties and the price is the sole consideration for selling price we add all the expenses and if discount is given we detect the discount then whatever the balance you will get that will be the transaction value okay when the buyer and the seller are the different parties and price is the sole consideration here if the value of taxable supply where the consideration is not only in money okay here the price of the product is not paid only in money, fully not paid in money. At that case, how you compute the taxable value of supply? So it is determined under rule section or under rule 27 of the GST Act, where the consideration is not only in money, then the value of supply is, okay. If the, you know, the value of particular product is fully in money, then we compute in a different way. If in case, if the consideration is not fully in money, then the value of supply is open market value. The value of supply is open market value. So whatever the open market value is there for a particular product, that will be considered as the value of supply. For example, fridge. Okay. Here, the amount is not fully paid in cash. The, okay. Just they exchange the product. For example, they exchange the old fridge. Old fridge. So here you can't determine the price. So what you will do, you will consider the open market value of the fridge as the value of supply or if the open market value is not available, if the open market value of the product is not available, then some total of consideration in money and further amount in money is equivalent to the consideration not in money. So here what we will do, whatever the item we are exchanging and whatever the amount we collected, that we total and then we consider that as the value of supply in case if the open market value of the product is not determined or it is not given. Next, if the value of supply is not determined as per the above points, then the value of supply of goods or services of like kind and quality. See in the above cases, in above two cases, if it is not possible to determine the value of supply, then what we will do? the same kind of product is available in the market with the same features if the same product is available in the market with different brand with the same quality then whatever the price they are charging the same price we will be charging this to this product also then we will consider that value as the value of supply so in which case we do that in case if the value of taxable supply if it is not 
determinable and if the transaction is not fully in money if it is not considered not fully in money not only in money then we take these three points and we consider the the best one or the the you know the uh, item whichever we get whether the open market value or the amount which we get with the exchange amount and the amount we collected are the same like kind and quality products whichever the item we get we take that and we consider that value as the value of supply if the consideration is not only in money next value of taxable supply where supply between distinct or related persons other than agent rule number 28 so here in case if the supply is made if the supply is made to a related party okay you know the party you are you you know supplied the goods or the services to brother itself so he's related to you so at that time how to determine the value of supply okay for that the first thing open market value first you look into the open market value of the product whatever the open market value of the product is there that value will be the value of supply for example fridge again that we take the same example fridge so fridge it cost 50000 rupees okay it cost 50000 rupees but you sold it to your brother to your brother for rupees 20000 okay you sold it for 20000 to brother so here you and your brother both are related parties because of that you, you know, sold it for 20000 but 20000 is not the price of the product what is the price of the product yes it is 50000 so that is why we will not take 20000 we look into the open market value so open market value let us say 50000 so we will take the 50000 as the value of supply not the 20000 next if open market value is not available then the value of supply of goods or services of like kind and quality so as what we discussed for the previous one the same thing if the open market value of the product is not available then the similar product which is available in the market with the same same like and you know uh, kind and quality whatever the price they are charging for that product the same rate will be charging for example the fridge with the same kind of features and all if they are charging 60000 if the open market value is not available if they are charging other brand 60000 then we will take the 60000 as the open market value next if the value of supply is not determinable as per the above points then the value of supply of goods or services will be calculated as per rule 30 and 31 so here in case if it is not possible to determine the value of supply based on the open market value and like kind and quality products then we go with rule number 30 and 31 rules and regulations to determine the price or the value of supply under related parties next value of supply as per rule number 30 so how we compute the value of supply as per rule number 30 so where value of taxable supply is not determinable under section 27 28 and 29 then it will be calculated as per rule number 30 and as per this rule the value of shall be 110 percent of the value of the product will be 110 percent of cost of production or cost of acquisition or cost of provision of such services see if it is not possible to determine the value of supply under section under rule number 27 28 and 29 we go with rule number 30 what rule number 30 says it says you calculate 110 percent of cost of production or cost of acquisition so you compute 110 percent so that 110 percent value will be the value of supply or if it comes to services the cost of provision of such service into 110 percent that means here if the cost of production is 100 rupees plus 10 rupees so now 110 rupees will be the value of supply got it here if the cost of acquisition is 150 rupees plus 10 percent that is 15 so total 165 rupees will be the value of supply this is how you are going to compute under rule number 30 next rule number 31 even if it is not possible to determine under rule number 30 then what you will do you will go with rule number 31 okay from 27 28 and 29 
and 30. In this all four rules also you can't find the value of supply of a particular product. Then what you will do? You go with rule number 31. So what rule number 31 says where the value of supply of goods or services or both cannot be determinable as per rule number 27 to rule number 30 then the same shall be determined as per reasonable means with the principles and general provisions of the section 15 and the provisions of the chapters. So if it is not possible to determine the you know the value of supply from rule number 27 to rule number 30 then we go with calculation of value of supply under section 15 of the provisions and the chapter that means whatever we calculated in the starting itself that is selling price add expenses less discount in the same way only we calculate the value of supply if it is not possible to determine the value of supply under section 20 under rule 27 28 29 and 30. So this is how we are going to compute the value of supply if a person is not related to each other and if the price is the sole consideration what we will do just we directly go with yes this you know pro forma that is the selling price add expenses less discount when if the persons are not related each other and price is the sole consideration that means you are purchasing the fridge, you are paying 50,000, that's it. Okay. And here you both the parties are not related each other. So at that time, the format what we follow under section 15 of the GST Act. Selling price, add expenses, less discount and the whatever balance you will get transaction value. In case, if to compute the taxable value of supply, if the consideration not wholly in money, that means if whatever the recipient is paying, if he is not paying the full amount in money, if he is exchanging or if he is exchanging for redemption of some, you know, vouchers and all, at that time, we are going to consider the open market value of the product or the, the exchange item, what they are exchanging and what the amount is paying, that amount or the same like and kind quality product in these three, whichever is available, that will be, will taken as value of supply. Next, if both parties are related, if both parties are related, what we will do? Then we go with the open market value. If open market value is not available, we go with same kind and quality product. If same kind and quality product is not available, then we go with rule number 30 and 31. Right? Then what rule number 30 says? Rule number 30 says, if not possible to determine under section 27, 28 and 29, just you consider 110% of cost of production or cost of acquisition as value of supply and if it comes to services cost of provision of such services into 110 percent that will be the value of services and again if it is not possible to determine the value of supply under rule number 30 also then we go with rule number 31 so what rule number 31 says rule number 31 says if it is not possible to determine the value of supply under section 27 to 30 then it just directly go with section 15 that how we normally calculate the value of supply in the same way compute the value of supply for computing the value of supply for the purpose of imposing the GST. So this is how we are supposed to determine based on the situation or based on the type of transaction a person is doing. So I hope all of you understood the topic what we discussed today about value of supply that is taxable value of supply. I'll come up with few more new topics in the upcoming session. Until then thank you all. Have a nice day. Namaste.